We're currently at the marina on the last day of our trip fueling up, but today's video is going to be about a dive called the Dunraven. This one of the most popular wrecks in Egypt is absolutely stunning because you can enter at a depth of 28 meters and run pretty much the whole way through it, can't you? Yeah, what was really crazy was right at the end, there were probably upwards of 15 lionfish just through the back of the boat like this and trying to come through all the lionfish was like this. Oh. Especially because they turn it upside down, so you try and avoid them and they turn their spikes on to you. But they're yeah. all dancing, eating the glass sweepers, but it was so cool. You guys are going to enjoy this one. Yeah, so we'll roll some footage of that. Hope you enjoy. See you on the flip side, guys. Bye. Yalla, yalla. Where are we going? I swim in desert. I swim in the sea in Dutch. Dutch. And where are we diving? What's it called again? Dunraven. The Dunraven. You can, we should start doing those things. We are going to go dive oh Dunraven. I know what I'm going to edit the next video like. Uh oh. Watch out for that one, guys. Welcome to another famous and iconic Red Sea shipwreck. Now when you think of wrecks in the Red Sea, you think of the Thysogorm, the Umbria, the Janus Dee, and of course, the Dunraven. Now I've been buzzing to dive this one because this is a wreck I'd never dived of and heard so much about it, because you can dive through the entire wreck. And as we start dropping into the wreck, we enter the stern section around about 30 meters and start making our way up through this incredible wreck through the body of it. And this is what's epic, is you can dive from literally the deep end of the wreck through the whole wreck, it's so open, to around about midship where it breaks open and flattens it out. But honestly, wow. You just see the lights coming in, look at all the penetration opportunities, bringing in this natural light flood. While you have the torches coming through, it is a spectacular dive. Now, a bit of history about the wreck. The wreck was built in Newcastle upon Tyne at the C. Mitchell and C. Iron Ship Builders and was launched in 1872. The ship was owned by Mr. W. Milburn and it was one of the very last ships powered by both sail and steam. And she was planned en route from Brittany to Bombay in India. Now, three years later, in January 1876, she set sail from Liverpool, loaded with steel and timber, bound for Bombay, now known as Mumbai. There, the cargo was sold and she was reloaded with spices, cotton and muslin for the return journey. It was generally an uneventful journey and she reached the Red Sea, approaching the Suez Canal on the 25th of April. Thinking they were further up than the Gulf of Suez than they actually were, Captain Kerr and about 25 his crew sailed the ship straight into the reef. The ship struck fast south of Beacon Rock at the southern end of the furthest reaches of which is now known as Raz Mohammed National Park, on the outside of Shabu Mahud. The crew worked frantically to dislodge her and 14 hours after striking the rock, she slid off this motion upset her balance and she capsized. She sunk quickly into 30 meters of water, leaving the crew to be rescued by lifeboats by local fishermen. Now, as we are moving through the wreck, we come across a surprise. When we reach midship, you can hear our reaction. There is lion fish everywhere. And I mean everywhere on this wreck. And this is what caught us out by surprise, because look at the way they turned down. They turned down and it had their spines aimed at us. And of course, lionfish are venomous, not poisonous, because they have to inject their venom into you. And we got a bit anxious when we got a bit close with them, because there was, I think in total, 19 in this one little area. But right now, you can see about seven there. They're feeding on the juvenile schooling fish and also the glassy sweepers. But look at Holly's reaction. She's like, arms crossed, no way, how am I meant to get through here? And she just bolts for it. Almost gives the lionfish a little flick as well on the way through. And she is like, no, no way am I getting stung today, no way. As you see, Ariana and Bart trying to get through as well. That caught us a bit by surprise. We were all amazed how many lionfish there were. Even when you looked up above, underneath, 
there was lionfish everywhere on this dive. Now, the difference is, compared to the Caribbean, lionfish are native to the Red Sea. So, you don't actively shoot them, they are native. Now, as we were saying, as we make our way towards the stern of the wreck, she did sink quickly, leaving the crew to be rescued from the lifeboats by local fishermen. After the incident, the British Board of Trade held an inquiry and found Captain Kerr to have been at fault. The, the board declared him negligent and revoked his captain's licence, the master certificate for a year. Now, this has become one of the most popular dive sites in the Red Sea. And as you can see, you can really, truly see why. Now, it's a very busy dive site. As you can see, we have a big liverboard above us. When we reached the bow of the wreck, we had a liverboard actually trying to anchor and moor into the dive site. A bit uncomfortable because we were like, oh no, hope a chain's not going to come down or an anchor. But no, it's okay. They moor into the reef. So we were kind of safe and clear, but you just have that little bit of anxiety when it's a, bit, a big boat like that is above you. Now, as we continue moving around the bow, we look in the nooks and crannies to see what we can find. And there were so many cool corals and marine life, even big clams as well. But in the bow section, there is a little bit of penetration, but it's not advised because it's so collapsed. So in our briefing, we were, we were told not to enter this part of the wreck. You can see Holly was having a little think about it and thought, nope, we're not got to. I better be on my best behavior and avoid that. So we continue making our way back to midship. Now, yes, the deeper parts around about 30 meters, maybe 28 meters, but the top of it's around about 15, 16 meters, 50 feet. Oh, yeah. So it's a really nice depth for all divers. Mm -hmm. And what's really cool as well is it's right next to the reef and a wall. So you can actually move from the wreck onto the wall and it's a gradual sloping wall all the way up to five meters, 15 feet. Actually, to be honest, the top of the reef actually breaks the water. So when it's low tide, the top of the reef is actually out of the water. But this is, means it's available and accessible for all divers. Now you can see a little bit of currents picking up because you can see the bubbles going up and look at the bubbles when they hit the top above the wreck. They're streaming away to the side because we had a little current start to pick up. Nothing too serious, but we continue moving along the wreck and actually start heading up the sloping wall to kind of work our way up, see what we can find on the reef, but also for our safety stop as well. And honestly, the reef is spectacular. You can see the wreck sitting there in the distance. It honestly looks like a big coral head because it's covered in so much coral. But when you move up the wall, there is banner fish, there is mass puffers, there was mass butterfly fish, there was moray eels, there was giant clams. There was so much life on the wall and the coral was spectacular. And to be honest, like in the Indonesian Pacific regions when you dive, all the best stuff is in that 20 to 80 foot range. You know, five to 21 meters. And it's no different in the Red Sea. The shallower up you go, the more colorful it gets, the more beautiful it gets. You don't need to go deep in the Red Sea to enjoy it. But I'm gonna let you guys continue to enjoy this beautiful dive site on this dive on the Dunraven. I really hope you guys enjoyed coming out and exploring with us. And I'll allow you guys to continue to explore this stunning reef. As always, thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe, like and share, and we'll see you guys in next week's video.